Hey, it's Abdullah, and this is my comparison of the Nokia X20 against the Nokia XR20 in order to help you decide which device is more suitable for you. And let me start by quickly telling you about my experience with the X10 and the X20, which has been quite interesting. I previously complained that they lack a wow factor, which is still true. Their most obvious advantages being the design, which is of course subjective, and their best-in-class in-hand feel, which is something you need to experience firsthand in order to understand. But after carrying them for several months, it's very easy for me to recommend them to most people. In the mid-range segment where most OEMs are tripping over each other to offer you one or two exceptional features, while obviously trying to hide some of the flaws under the rug, the X10 and the X20 in contrast offer a very balanced experience that you grow to appreciate over time. Almost like the difference between a guy who only works out his upper half of the body while completely skipping leg day versus a person who's well toned all around. Safe but without an Achilles heel. Now in contrast the XR20 is a lot more interesting. It offers a very similar base experience to the X10 and the X20 so some spec hunters might be confused as to why it costs a lot more than both of these devices. But once you start digging a bit deeper the picture becomes a lot more clear. So let's start with the similarities of these two devices. Both share the same 6.67 inch IPS LCD display with a 1080p resolution and the displays on the them are almost identical when it comes to colors, contrast, and viewing angles. The only minor difference being that the XR20's display can get a tiny bit brighter. They both share the same Snapdragon 480 processor paired with the Adreno 619 GPU and even the same UFS 2.2 memory speeds. Both of them come with 128 gigabytes of internal storage, which can be expanded with a memory card slot. Both come with a fingerprint scanner that's integrated into the power button, and the location of the overall hardware keys are almost identical. The charging speed is identical at 18 watts, and they both take approximately 40 minutes to reach 50% battery charge. They support a very wide spectrum of 5G bands, meaning that wherever you go around the world, you'll most likely be able to get a 5G signal. And finally, they both offer the same stock Android 11 experience out of the box. Now let's talk about the differences with the most obvious one being the fact that the XR20 is a rugged device, which also reflects on the design. And as a result, the XR20 is bigger in almost every dimension, especially the thickness. It's also around 30 grams heavier, which is immediately noticeable when you pick both of them up. And their in-hand feel is very different. So the XR20 has an aluminum frame and the back is made out of polymer plastic, which has a slightly rubberized finish. This is in contrast to the soft matte finish on the X20. And this makes the XR20 a lot less likely to slip out of your hands accidentally. It's also IP68 water and dust resistance, and it has a military standard 810H protection against damage. It can withstand drops of up to 1.8 meters, even on a concrete surface. It can also withstand extreme temperatures. And on the front you get the tougher Gorilla Glass Victus versus Gorilla Glass 5 on the X20. Now all of these certifications and protections means that you absolutely don't need to use the XR20 with a case. Something that would make even the legendary 3310 proud. This is also why the X20 comes with a very nice compostable case in the box, while the XR20 doesn't. Then there's the additional features that you'll find on the XR20 that are missing from the X20. Like the obnoxiously loud dual speaker setup you have here compared to a bottom firing speaker on the X20. Support for 15 watts wireless charging, which is really cool. A reprogrammable red emergency button located at the very top, which is completely customizable. A lanyard hole at the bottom, which is very useful if you want to take this out on an adventure. And there's also a slightly larger battery capacity on the XR20 at around 4630 milliamps versus 4470 milliamps on the X20. And this reflects very slightly on the actual battery life performance, as I think both of these phones offer excellent battery life. So you'll be able to get approximately 10 hours of screen time on each of them, and I wouldn't really say that the battery life advantage is a reason I'd go for this over the X20. And then there's the sensors and the connectivity aspects too. The XR20 supports USB-C 3.0 speeds versus 2.0 speeds on the X20. So this means up to 10 times faster file transfers on the XR20, which is a significant advantage. The XR20 also comes with a barometer and supports a lot more GPS sensors and standards. 
It also comes with Bluetooth 5.1 versus 5.0 on the X20. And from my experience, the XR20 has a superior signal reception, which is something that would definitely be appreciated by people who take their phones hiking or camping, for example. Now, as for performance, even though they look identical on paper, there's actually a very slight advantage for the X20 in terms of benchmarks. And even though that difference is almost minimal, it does actually reflect very slightly on your day-to-day -day usage. I just find the X10 a bit more responsive and a bit more smooth. Very, very slightly, but with extended usage, you definitely start to notice the difference. That doesn't translate to gaming though, as both phones can run the exact same games at the same graphical settings. And honestly, both of these phones do a really good job when it comes to handling graphic intensive games and playing them at a very acceptable level. So Call of Duty, PUBG, Asphalt 9, Dead Cells all ran really well. Now, as for software support, the XR20 will get three years of OS updates and four years of security updates versus three years of OS updates on the X20 and three years of security updates. Now, one of the most obvious difference between these two devices is their cameras. So you get a 64 megapixel main camera on the X20 versus a 48 megapixel main camera on the XR20 and a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera on the XR20 versus a five megapixel ultra wide camera on the X20, both with Zeiss optics. The XR20 also skips the rather pointless two megapixel macro camera and two megapixel depth sensor found on the X20 in favor of an additional dual LED setup on the back. This means that you can use up to three LED flashlights on the XR20, which offer a ridiculously bright torch. In terms of image quality, I find the X20's camera to be superior in daylight. Its images are better exposed, so they look brighter, and the color processing is very neutral. It also captures slightly better resolved details thanks to capturing images in a 16 megapixel size versus 12 megapixels on the XR20. On the other hand, the XR20's images tend to be a bit more warm, a bit more saturated, and with a bit more contrast. In low light and using night mode, it gets more interesting. The X20 can take really nice, bright, low light images, but I tend to prefer the processing on the XR20. And while the images don't tend to be as bright as the X20, it does offer a better balanced image with a more natural look. I also much prefer the way that the XR20 handles the night sky versus the X20, which tries a bit too hard to get the sky as bright as possible, which ends up making the image look a bit worse. Either ways, image processing is a very subjective matter. So I'd like to hear what you guys think. Which camera do you think captures the better images? the X20 or the XR20. As for the ultra wide cameras, I think the XR20 wins this round easily, mainly thanks to the higher resolution, but I wouldn't really consider any of these phones ultra wide camera champions. As for the selfie camera, the X20 is the winner here. It has a 32 megapixel front camera versus only an eight megapixel selfie camera on the XR20. This one does the absolute minimum, while this one actually offers really decent quality. Now, when it comes to video, both of them can only shoot up to 1080p at 60 frames per second. But the XR20 has two additional features. One of them is action cam, which crops from the ultra wide camera to create a very steady footage. And speed warp, which gives you control over your hyperlapse video, so you can speed it up or slow it down based on the action in the scene. There you have it, folks. At a surface level, both of these devices might seem similar. But in reality, the XR20 is a much more feature packed device on top of being incredibly durable. At this point, you should know which one is more suitable for you, and hopefully you will be able to understand why there is a price gap between them. The X20 is the choice of the people looking for a very competent all-rounder that comes with a very nice felt design. While the XR20 is aimed at people who are looking for a competent device that can survive absolutely anything that life throws at you and for those of you who want to keep the spirit of adventure alive. It's also really nice being able to carry a device these days without worrying about a protective case and about what's gonna happen in case you drop it accidentally, which is the main reason why the XR20 has been my daily driver for the past month. But I'll leave it up to you. Which one of these devices do you prefer and why? X20, XR20. Let me know in the comments down below. That's it from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up to support me and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying my content. And I shall see you in the next one.